Hey, welcome back to another coding video. Today we're going to be doing something a little different. I had someone message me on LinkedIn and ask me if I could do a problem for them. They'd been trying to work out on their own. I said, sure, I have no problem doing that. So this one's called find the number. And basically what's going on here is we have a list of integers and another integer given to us. And we want to return whether the integer exists in the list of integers. And if it does, then we're to return yes, capital yes. And if it doesn't, then we're going to return capital no. Um, so looking at our constraints here to make sure we're not going to get into trouble, um, we have the number of elements being greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to 10 to the fifth. And then the elements in the array are going to be between 1 and 10 to the ninth. So nothing too crazy going on here. I think our standard um, lists and integers are just going to be just fine. So yeah, with that, let's jump right into the code. So <clears throat> there's a couple of, so this was given also in the problem statement. This is kind of our method outline. We're to return that string like I was saying, yes or no. Here we have our list of integers, which we'll be calling array or I'll be calling it array, A-R-R, -R, in the code. And here, integer k, that's the one that we're going to be searching for. So it's getting mad at us because we haven't filled it out yet. So let's take a minute and talk about this problem, actually. So there's a couple really important things going on in this problem statement. First thing is that this list, array, is unsorted. That's really important because if if we could guarantee that our list is sorted, there's a couple other algorithms that we could choose to make this a lot faster. Um, if you're interested in looking that up, I would suggest going and reading about binary search algorithm. Uh, that's a super cool algorithm, one of my favorite algorithms, because it's just so blazing fast when it comes to finding things in sorted lists. So unfortunately, our list is not guaranteed to be sorted, so we can't take advantage of that. Um, the other thing to note is that we're only looking for one thing. Um, if we had like a list of things that we were looking for, say, say K was actually a list of integers, then we might try and implement an algorithm that takes advantage of work we've already done. Uh, an algorithm like that is called a dynamic programming algorithm. Um, that's also something that I would recommend reading about, although that is a little bit more of an advanced topic. Um, but yeah, definitely worth reading about. It's an algorithm that tries to take advantage of work it's already done, like I said. So um, if we had a list of integers that we were looking for within our list of integers, we could possibly take advantage of stuff we've already looked for, or maybe look for all of them at the same time. I don't know, it really depends on your, on how many things are in array, how many things are in your list of integers K. In this case, like I said, this is pretty much the most straightforward case we could have besides array not being sorted. So we know that at worst case, we're going to have to just look at every single thing in array. So really, we're just going to be doing a simple linear search. And they call it linear search is just because you start from the very first thing and you go one by one through everything in the list all the way to the end and you compare each element to K. And if you find it, then you return. So let's code that up really quickly. So we have array.count. So this loop is now going to go over everything in array. So we'll just now compare if the thing at array is equal to k, then we will return yes. So we don't want to put an else statement and say, um, return no, because if we do that, then it will return no after we've only looked at one thing. So we do want to return no, but not until we're done looking at every single thing in the list and making sure it's not there for sure. So that will happen after we're out of the loop. So if we make it to this point in the code, we're safe saying return no, because by this point, we've already looked at every single thing. So that's our simple array search. Let's go ahead and run this. I have a couple of test cases running in the back end, which we'll take a look at. So here's the list that we're looking for. 
sorry, looking through, and then here are the numbers that we're looking for individually. So we can see five uh, exists right here. So we've put yes, 141 does not, so we said no. 33 does not, so we've said no. 25 and 25 exists right there, so we've turned yes. So it looks like our code is, expect, is running as expected. I know this isn't a ton of test cases, but anyways, let's go over now a little bit cleaner solution um, using link. So using link to find a number in a list, um, your initial react, your initial inclination, I guess, is to use find. So find is not actually what we want here. Um, and this is why it's handy to have a good IDE that shows you the method descriptions that were written by whoever wrote the method, because then it kind of saves you the time for going and Googling them and making sure you're using them right and whatnot. So this one just says searches for an element that matches conditions defined by the specified predicate and returns first occurrence within the entire list. So um, it's going to be returning the element if it's found. And if it's not found, which it doesn't say here, I had to go look up the documentation, if it's not found, then it actually returns a default value. So that gives us a problem because the default value of int is zero. And so what if we're searching for zero? What if k is equal to zero? Well, then if it's found, then we'll be re returning the first occurrence of it, which will be zero. And if it's not found, then it'll be returning the default value of int, which is zero. So either way, our method's going to return true, even if zero is not in our list. So be careful with that. What we will be using is any. And so we'll say if there's any element where, let me just move this cursor, where the element is equal to k. So any will search through all the elements in array. And if there's anything that matches the condition we've given it, which is that the element match k, then it will just return true. So if it finds it early, then it won't bother looking through the rest of the things. So our problem now is that any is giving us a Boolean, whether it was found or not, if there's anything that matches our condition or not. So we could just throw this in a if else statement. If it's found, return true or return yes, and if it's not, then return no. Um, with simple if else statements, I like to use the ternary operator, which is um, the syntax for that is you have a condition, a conditional. So conditionals evaluate to a boolean, either true or false. So there's our condition. We've done the question mark to specify what we're what we're doing, we're using the ternary operator, that's what that's called. So then we'll be returning yes if it's true and no if it's not. So the way the syntax works is that we separate the true return and the false return with a semicolon, uh, sorry, with a colon, and true comes first and false comes later. So that is all we need. If there's any element where the element matches k, return yes, and if there's not, return no. So let's go ahead and run this, and we're still getting yes, no, no, yes. So I believe that problem is solved. Thanks for watching.